What's up you guys? Welcome back again to your Heroclix headquarters. Today I've got a fun 300 point Spider-Man family theme team. Uh, so this isn't going to be anything crazy, super meta competitive or anything like that. This is just really more of like a fun locals kind of level team you could bring and maybe still do well, I think, honestly. Um, so yeah, starting us off here, uh, the main guy is Spider-Man himself, the 200 point Spider-Man. Um, so he is a lot of points and he is pretty much your only major source of damage on the team. So I'll say right now, that's kind of the weakness of the team is that this guy's going to be doing all the work <laughs> and then we have support around him. Uh, but he's a really, really awesome figure and I really wanted to try him out. So uh, starting off with taking a look at his card here. Um, and also one thing I wanted to mention about this team is it is very like new player friendly in the sense that you really just have this one figure to worry about and then positioning of your, you know, supporting figures. Um, and then it's also a very cheap, you know, a very cheap team. It's very wallet friendly because um, this is the most expensive figure on the team by far. Everything else, there's one other pretty cheap super rare and the rest is all commons and uncommons. So uh, for that reason, I think this team is also very great. You could easily throw this together uh, if you just got a few packs. Uh, maybe you had to trade for this guy or something like that. But anyway, without further ado, uh, this Spider-Man here has this wall crawler trait. He's got leap climb free place this character in a square of different elevation within four squares and line of fire. Uh, so the cool thing about that is because this is a theme team, you'll get plus three to your roll for map, which means you have good chances of actually picking a map with lots of elevated train so he can be zipping around a bunch. Uh, then he has traded toughness and willpower, so that gives him a little more durability, and the willpower really helps him to keep going every turn. Uh, so he starts with 8 movement with a special movement power, 4 range double target, 12 attack super strength, 19 with super senses, and 4 damage with probability control, uh, as well as a Spider-Man team ability, so he gets a plus 1 to his super sense rolls, so that means he's got 50-50 chance already of dodging everything, and don't forget that toughness comes in handy if he, you know, misses the super sense. Also, a 19 with prob is really hard to hit as is. Um, and then you have the super senses on top of that and the toughness if all else fails. Uh, but then the, that starting movement power gives him flurry and hypersonic speed. And when Spider-Man uses hypersonic speed, he may instead make up to two close attacks. Uh, so the really cool thing about that is normally you can't use flurry with hypersonic speed because hypersonic speed gives you a regular attack close or range with half range. Um, however, flurry needs a close action, which you can combo with charge, but not with hypersonic. So that's why this special hypersonic is really nice. It lets him use, uh, make up to two close attacks while, you know, hypersonicking. Uh, so very awesome. Uh, definitely ups his damage potential a whole bunch, uh, which is really necessary on this team. Because like I said, this guy is the main damage dealer. Then he's also got a stop click with regeneration, super senses, and safeguard outwit, which means his whole dial uh, stop is already protected outwit, but safeguard outwit gives it to his whole dial. So that is nice. Um, and yeah, he's got three of those stop clicks throughout his uh, 11 click long dial. So uh, this guy is a really, really hard to get through. You know, like I said, multiple layers of defense. You already got the 19 super senses hard enough to hit that in the first place. Um, and even if you do hit that, he's got 50-50 chances of dodging it. And if you do hit that, he's got toughness to absorb some of the hit. And then, you know, he's got a stop click here, here, and here. So minimum, it's going to take you four really strong hits to get all the way through him. Um, and that's, you know, even if you manage to get through all the prob and super senses. So how are we going to build around this guy? Well, um, I will say right now that I like to call this team Spider-Man and his amazing lady friends because it is pretty much all of his girlfriends, ex-girlfriends, wives, and, uh, and Aunt May also. <laughs> so uh, anyway, starting us off here, I guess we'll start with Mary Jane, the OG. MJ right here. So uh, you could also, I want to point out, you could also use some of the figures from the Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage set. Um, like the Mary Jane and the Gwen of that set are very good, but I thought I'd try out these new ones first. So uh, we got the new Mary Jane here. She's got this rally ability. When a friendly character with the Spider-Man team ability uses super senses, you may remove one of Mary Jane's rally dice to re-roll it. 
So if you manage to roll a one with any of your attacks with Spider-Man, you can put that one on her uh, card, and then you can use that later to re-roll his Super Sense rolls if you get a bad one. Uh, so that's really good. It you know, gives him that extra, extra layer of defense, as well as her also having Prob, and she's got Spider-Man TA, so she does have Super Senses on a six. Uh, with Combat Reflexes, you know, gives her some pretty good defense up close. 18 with Super Senses on a 6 and Prob. You know, you got some layers there to get through. Uh, and if she does take a hit, she gets some willpower and support. So if she doesn't just get instantly KO'd, she can actually be supporting him, healing him up. Because with the new support, uh, it's very powerful. You just take a power action to roll a d6 and heal them half the result uh, for an adjacent friendly character. So very strong, um, you know, just cheap support figure to prob some of our rolls, uh, re-roll our super sense rolls, and potentially get some support there on the later dial. And then moving on next here, we have Gwen Stacy, who uh, also for 20 points, uh, and also pretty much the same sculpt as Mary Jane, just a, uh, you know, recolor, repaint there. She's actually the only uncommon on the team, most of it's commons. But anyway, she has this trait here that, uh, a Gwen through space and time, when Gwen Stacy would be KO'd by an opponent's attack, instead, you may replace her with a character with the Agwengers trait on their last non-KO click. This game, that character can't be healed, and when it's KO'd, it scores 30 points instead. So, instead of the 20 points, uh, basically, they have to KO her. They don't get the 20 points because it's when she would be KO'd. You can instead replace her uh, with, you know, one of the things off the sideline. And then that thing scores 30 points when it's KO'd instead of her 20. Uh, so pretty nice. Um, and this isn't even really necessary. That's just if you happen to have any of the Agwengers chases. Uh, you just throw one of those on the sideline and she can turn into it when she would be KO'd. Um, not really necessary. She's just here for uh, the leadership mainly um, because we do need a little leadership to be running around all these supporting characters. The plus one action total does help for that. And uh, yeah, just keeping her near Spider-Man, uh, adjacent to Spider-Man if possible to potentially roll leadership and take a token off him is going to help us out a lot. Uh, because again, he's pretty much her main damage dealer here. Plus you got the Spider-Man TA with super senses. So, uh, you know, 50-50 super senses is pretty hard to hit on her as well. And anyway, uh, moving on next, one of my favorites for the team is Black Cat. And uh, we're playing her at the 20 point line. And uh, yeah, this Black Cat is really something else. So uh, we'll take a look at her card here. She's got a trait that gives her giant reach two and opposing characters within four squares have safeguard friendly probability control. That means their friendly characters can't reroll their rolls, which is really awesome. Uh, it, you know, really, with all the prob that's on this team already, uh, it just makes it that much harder to hit Spider-Man because even if they do hit it, you have like four probs on it and your opponent can't prob it at all if they're within four squares of this black cat. So that's really powerful. Um, she also has Spider-Man team ability. Uh, so she's going to start with 7 movement leap climb, 10 attack precision strike, 17 combat reflexes, 2 damage with probability control for the 20 point line. And if she takes a hit, she'll get some outwit later as well. She's pretty much our best secondary attacker. Uh, with 10 attack, precision strike, and 2 damage with that giant reach as well. Uh, but yeah, she's got the Underworld team ability also, which does give her Passenger 1 to carry around someone she shares a keyword with, or Passenger 2 if they're lower points, but you know, they're all pretty much the same points, so that's not really going to matter. Uh, but yeah, so she does uh, have the ability to carry one other person around with her, which is really nice. Um, you know, it helps free up a, an action here and there. Uh, if you're not really using them for anything else anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so she's basically our secondary attacker and just shutting off opponent's probs is super powerful. Um, and then also, speaking about probs, like I said, we've got at least four of them because the only other super rare figure we're playing is Madam Web. And uh, as far as super rares go, she's actually fairly cheap. Uh, last I checked, she's like $10 right now, which is nuts to me because she is actually really, really powerful. Um, so taking a look at her card here, Spider-Man TA and Mystics TA, I'll point that out. Uh, rally for six of opposing rolls. So whenever your opponent rolls a six in their attack roll, you put a die with a six on her card. Uh, she's got super senses, and when a friendly character uses super senses, instead of rolling a d6, you may remove one of Madam Webb's rally dice to use it as the result. So yeah, anytime they roll a six against you after resolutions, you get the six on her card, and then you can use that towards uh, just replacing 
any super sense roll you want to make it a six. So all the characters on this team have the Spider-Man team ability. Uh, so even if they don't have regular super senses, you can still give them that six and just get an automatic, you know, dodge with the super senses, which is really great. Uh, and then she has free, choose a friendly character with the Spider-Man family keyword within four squares. Till your next turn, that character can use improved movement, blocking, and characters. This is a really nice um, to be able to have your Spider-Man hypersonic, you know, through walls, through barriers, that kind of stuff. Or even just to have him break away with the hypersonic to ignore characters. Um, and it's also really nice to have your supports be able to break away too. Uh, to be able to ignore characters and blocking to move into position better. And, you know, get the probs where you need them, basically. And, you know, if your opponent runs up on you, you can run away really easy. So it's a really, really nice effect to have. It comes in handy. Uh, in a lot of situations really, but yeah, anyway, she's got two range eight movement with stealth 10 attack 18 with combat reflexes and two damage with a special damage power uh, For only 30 points. So she does a lot already with the rally dice You know, she's got super duper senses from having that there and the the TA as well She's got mystic so she does get hit She's dealing some damage right back and stealth and combat reflexes is a really powerful combo they can't, she can't be targeted by range. They're going to have to come up close and hit a 20 with super duper senses. And on her special damage power, it gives her probability control. Madam Web can use probability control an additional time each turn, but only to target a character with the Spider-Man family keyword. So that's great. Um, that gives us two probs for our Spider-Man's attack rolls. And if anybody's attacking us who happens to have the Spider-Man keyword, uh, Spider-Man family keyword as well, that means she can prob them twice also, which is really nuts. So um, you got one, two, three, four. He has himself, so that's four probs, five, because uh, she can prob him twice. So it gives us all the prob in the world. You know, with a 12 attack on Spider-Man, odds are you're gonna hit all your attacks. Um, and with his 19 defense, her ability to shut off opposing probs, and you know, your four, potentially five probs you have here, really, really hard to hit him at all. Um, and then of course, like I said earlier with all the super duper senses, he's got her ability to just replace it with a six, her ability to re-roll it. Um, you know, you've got a lot of extra, extra layers of defense on the super senses. Um, now, only thing that sucks is it could just be outwitted. Um, there's nothing that says, until he gets to one of his stop clicks, there's nothing stopping them from just outwitting his super senses. Um, so that is something to look out for if you can try to take out anybody with outwit right away. Um, also, if you want to mess with the team a little bit, if you happen to have like Galactus or something, you could throw Galactus on the sideline to give him power cosmic, which would make him protected outwit, which would be great. But regardless of that, last but not least here, we have Aunt May for only 10 points. She's gonna be rounding out this team, making it an even 300 points. So uh, here's a quick look at her card. She also has a rally of a six. It says, when Aunt May uses support after rolling, you may remove one of her rally dice to choose one. Do not have the result. Or all other friendly characters adjacent to Aunt May are also healed the result. If the target character has the Spider-Man team ability, you may choose both. So you're always going to be able to choose both. Uh, you can choose to not have the result and heal the same result on all adjacent friendlies. So she's a huge healing battery for only 10 points. Uh, willpower keeps her running around too. So that's pretty awesome. She also has Spider-Man team ability, so she got super senses on a six, which can be replaced by Madam Web or something if they attack her. Uh, so you can kind of save her that way. Uh, but yes, yeah, that's she's just there to kind of sit in the back. And if your Spider-Man does take some big hits, you can run back, get some quick healing from her, um, and just get right back into the fight next turn. So uh, that's pretty much her main purpose. Honestly, if you were going to cut anything on this team, I would advise maybe cutting her. Uh, she's just kind of there to fill the points and, you know, provide that extra, extra layer of if they get through all this, just heal them right back up, right? Um, however, you could, uh, if you didn't want to use her, you could throw on, uh, like, let's say the Indigo Tribe Ring onto pretty much any of them. Uh, that also gives them support as well as being able to take a power action to create the Indigo Constructs. So if you wanted to you know, kind of up the team a little bit. Obviously that includes having the ring and a bunch of constructs, which is a lot harder to get than just this common figure. Uh, so that's just one way to upgrade the team. I feel like that would be better 
than Aunt May, but she's really, really good still just to heal him up. And also, like I mentioned earlier with Gwen, if you happen to have any of the Gwenders chases, you can throw them on the sideline. The best one, in my opinion, is the uh, Ingwenable Hulk. She uh, is pretty crazy just because they come in on their last non-KO click, and her last non-KO click is a whopping uh, 12 attack with super strength, 5 damage with close combat expert. So that's 13 for 6. She's got charge um, and traded flurry. So she's going to be able to potentially hit for 12 damage. Uh, and then she's also got impervious that uh, can reduce penetrating and is protected at wit. So she's really hard to put down and she can do a frick ton of damage. Uh, if they manage to KO your Gwen. So if you have that, that's awesome. Like I said, not super necessary. You could, if you have any of them, any of them are good to throw on the sideline for that. Um, but I just like the Unquittable Hulk the best. Another thing you could do to upgrade the team, if you happen to have the uh, Web Shooters object, you could just randomly get this in any booster from uh, Spider-Man and Beyond Amazing. Uh, if you happen to get these, that's great because you can just assign this to anybody that has the Spider-Man family keyword for free. Uh, it gives them incapacitate and when this character uses it until the end of your next turn, hit characters can't have their action tokens removed except by clearing. So that's really good. So anyway, yeah, the web shooters are free on anybody with Spider-Man family keywords. So you can put it on anybody you want. You probably don't want to put it on Spider-Man just because he's going to be using his actions to actually damage people. Um, but just throw that on anybody is great. Um, pretty much Black Cat, Madam Web, or Gwen are probably the best ones just because they actually have a 10 attack and like some range. She's got two range. She's got giant reach too. She actually has a three range randomly. Um, so she might be the best one. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, regardless, you can throw that on anybody you want for free. Um, so that's an option as well. And another few things you could throw on the sideline too, if you happen to have them, uh, is the mystery of the strange cube. This is a mystery card that specifically comes with Spider-Man Noir. So if you happen to pull him also, you could definitely just throw this on the sideline. Uh, so basically anyone with the Spider-Man family keyword, uh, whenever a funny character with this listed keyword uses super senses and succeeds after resolutions, gain a clue token. So, you know, you could gain a few clue tokens, and this gives you um, the ability that at the beginning of your turn, once you get to four clue tokens, at the beginning of your turn, you can choose a friendly character, roll a d6, till your next turn, opposing characters adjacent to that character can't use the power of the corresponding color. So you could shut off a few random powers that way, which is pretty nice, um, and it's free to just throw on the sideline. So if you have it, you know, might as well. It could come in handy. Not really too crazy or anything, but you never know. A couple other common figures that you could also throw on the sideline from older sets. Um, the Scroll Spy from Avengers Empire, uh, Avengers Fantastic Four Empire, whatever. Um, this guy has a sideline active trait so that whenever you KO a uh, opposing character, you can roll for this. If you get a five or six, you can generate the Scroll Spy on click number two in that square that the KO'd character occupied. Um, so then he's got, you know, 10 attack, 1 damage, a close combat expert, but it gets you another attacker, you know, it gets you another attack in each turn, which is kind of nice because uh, this team doesn't have a whole lot of that. Um, and another way to get another attacker coming in off the sideline is also the common sentinel from the Avengers, or sorry, the X-Men Rise and Fall set. Um, so yeah, this guy, if you get hit three times, I wouldn't really recommend putting him on here though, because you have to get hit three times to actually bring this guy in off the sideline, or two times if they all have the X-Men keyword that are hitting you. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of nice to just bring this guy off the sideline, 25 points, you know. He's got 11 attack, 2 damage with in cap, 6 range double target, some sidestep and invuln. So yeah, he's pretty good. Um, I mean, it is nice, like, if they go after your supports, right, they're a lot less, they're a lot easier to hit, so they're probably going to go after your supports, so you could bring this guy in off the sideline if they manage to hit all your supports or something. Um, so those are just some good cheap options that you might have lying around that you could throw on the sideline to help out. Um, another chase option, again, if you happen to be so lucky to have it, funny enough, Scrappy Do is actually really good to throw on the sideline for this team uh, because of his sideline active effect. Just says that when a friendly character that shares a keyword that 60 points or less is KO'd, after resolutions you can generate him on click number three and the char KO'd character is square, yada yada. Uh, but anyway, he's got Celebrity, and uh, both Mary Jane and Gwen have Celebrity. So those are two, you know, under 60-point options that you can use to bring in uh, Scrappy-Doo. And he's another great attacker, you know. 
Uh, when he hits, you can choose one to last until your next turn. The hit character can't be given free actions or they gain immobile, which is very nice. Uh, and then he takes maximum of one damage from monster and mystical, right? And he's got like charge, uh, super strength with that, um, is, was it close combat expert and outwit on his uh, damage power there. So yeah, uh, gets you another good close attacker to kind of just pop in off the sideline if they do KO one of your one of your people. So uh, you got lots of good sideline call-in options. Like I said, the Egwenger's trait person as well. Um, so lots of good things you could just throw in if you happen to have it. Like I said, none of that's necessary at all. So it's a pretty easily customizable team. Um, it's really, really cheap if just the main team itself is super cheap. Um, uh, so that's why I thought I'd share it with you guys because it's pretty fun, really hard to hit Spider-Man. Um, only weakness is actually getting damage in, but really all you got to do, uh, main strategy here is just have Spider-Man run up in there, you know, KO a few low cost figures. If you can just KO more cheap figures than they can, you're gonna win because he's 200 points. If you can manage to use him to KO uh, like 110 points worth of characters, you're probably gonna win because I doubt they're gonna KO him in, in 45 minutes with all that support on him. Um, it's not impossible, it's definitely very possible, but it's just gonna be really, really hard in your average game. So it's very possible that you could win just by you know, going after the right targets. So anyway, I like this team a lot. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash that like button. It does help me out a lot. But don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel even more, check the links in the description for our Patreon so you can see your name here in the credits with all these other awesome people and be entered into our monthly Patreon giveaways for as little as $1 a month. So if that interests you, make sure to check that out. But that's going to do it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters, signing off.